Homeless people in the UK are collectively referred to as rough sleepers. And according to unofficial estimates, there are over 300,000 people in this category. This is double the number five years ago. These individuals are not refugees or immigrants from Africa or Asia. They are citizens of the United Kingdom itself. Homeless people here are not just adults or middle-aged men. Recently, there's been a significant increase in the proportion of women and those aged between 16 and 24. They are young, strong and generally in good physical condition. Yet they still wander and sleep on the streets. Tents look strangely out of place in the commercial areas of cities, set among the offices and shops with cars and people passing by. These tents are, however, the only shelter these people have. Most of those sleeping rough don't even have a tent in which to shelter. Instead, they lurk in various public spaces in the city, like sidewalks, parks, bus stops, under bridges and at the corners of buildings. Homeless people come from various backgrounds and circumstances, yet they've all found themselves on the street. Many rely on welfare and charity, while others find intermittent work. Some survive by begging. The distinction between the homeless and beggars is not always clear. Some homeless people have jobs, but sleep on the streets due to insufficient income to pay for accommodation. Conversely, some beggars have homes, while others find themselves both begging and homeless. Some beggars choose this path as an easier way to earn money, finding it faster and more convenient than working. Some beg because they don't have a job, like this girl. Her lack of paid work stems from health issues, particularly problems with her leg, which hinders her ability to secure steady employment. I've got um, they emphysema. They get, well, I go out six weeks to even test. I got scoliosis, clip off the syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis in my knees and my spine. They think that I'm going to be in a wheelchair by the time I'm 40. So I'd rather um, get 12 pints a week, it's cheaper. So that's what I might hear to him. All right, so, yeah. so you sitting here yeah. hoping that you get 12 pounds a day in order Fed. to... Yeah, yeah, I get food so I can take home and then I need things like, I need things like um, underwear. Um, smellies, obviously, because I haven't got anything, you know, I haven't got any clothes, just what I'm wearing. Um, and so I'm trying to get money to get all of that stuff as well. The sight of homeless people leaning against the wall of a shop or curled up on the sidewalk raises questions. How did they end up here and how can they be helped? It is clear that there's no single cause of homelessness. But it is partially the result of economics, families, social structure and the problems faced by the individuals. I was homeless when I was 18. Why? Um, so I came to Cardiff from northwest England when I was 17 to live with my mum um, and things didn't work out on my 18th birthday. My mum was in a violent relationship with my stepdad and basically rather than chucking my stepdad out, she chucked me out. Um, so I ended up being homeless on the streets. Well, basically, I got made homeless when I was 18. 18? Yeah. Um, me and my Margaret basically just kicked me out. Um, I had nowhere else to go. Um, went to the Huggard. They gave me floor space. Um, and I've just been sleeping rough since. Having health problems or issues with family members doesn't necessarily result in homelessness, though. The underlying reasons are often insufficient income or the lack of a supportive family that accepts and cares for them. Individual backgrounds and personalities can, of course, play a big part. And uh, I feel free when I'm homeless. I don't have any, uh, you know, when I, when I cut off my family and I, I left that flat, it was like a, I cut a weight off and I'm free. It's nice to sometimes just pick up my stuff and go anywhere I want, you know? No burdens, no, you know, just, just me and that's it. 
Most of the homeless people we encounter are men, as living rough poses a greater risk for women. Nonetheless, the number of homeless women is on the rise. Another factor preventing escape from living on the streets is drug addiction. But I was on drugs. I'm on a methadone script now. So I'm coming off that, off the drugs. I'm off the drugs now. So you're clean now? Yeah, yeah, I'm on the methadone and hopefully, but it's not holding me, so I'm not very well at the moment. Um, I'm only on 30 mils, which is nothing, you know, to, to what I was smoking. Um, to, to 30 mils, it's nothing, you know, but I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow and they're going to induce it, I think, so hopefully, because I don't want to go back to using, you know. Her pink sleeping bag and personal belongings were packed into a black bag before she left to find a good place to beg. If she can collect enough today to pay the rent, the sleeping bag won't be needed tonight. When she's out of sight, no one knows if she is still abusing drugs. The cabinet is full of new syringes in sterile packets, while the yellow bin contains the used ones. The cycle of drug addiction and hard-to-find money needed to support the habit is how many people end up stranded on the streets, which in turn makes it difficult for them to get off drugs. The Huggard Centre is a homeless shelter run by an NGO. It provides clean needles for homeless people who use drugs. While this doesn't do much to stop drug abuse, at least clean needles can reduce other health problems which come from using a dirty needle. I think one of the important things is that we're trying to meet people where they are at the moment. And pretending people are not using drugs and not providing them with needles just means that they're going to put themselves in danger. And if they're putting themselves in danger, we're not looking after their welfare. So we're very much trying to meet people where they are at the moment and, and not suggesting they can suddenly give up um, you know, using substances. Even with free clean needles, drugs cannot be taken in the centre. There are many who take the view that this may actually encourage homeless people to continue using drugs. But the provision of clean needles has long been an accepted practice in many European countries, probably because it has been shown to significantly reduce the number of drug-related deaths and infections while easing the burden on state-provided health infrastructure. It's sometimes difficult because when people are, are coming to need exchange, very often it's because they want to use drugs at that moment. Um, but obviously as we get to know people and build up trust, um, we can actually help them further. So for example, we've, we've had, um, I think it was something like 90 people um, you know, last year who we got into rehabilitation programmes. So that's getting clean of drugs. Now we wouldn't have been able to do that if we hadn't met them where they are now, mm. rather than um, expecting them to, to be abstaining. In addition to the clean needle service, there's also an emergency room for use during the cold British autumn and winter, when outside temperatures can fall below zero for several days at a time. So this is our emergency overnight stay accommodation. Right. So if we're not able to put people in the hostel, which is most of the time because it's always full, um, rather than having people out on the streets, people can come in here um, and it'll be safe and warm. We'll have staff here all the way through the night. We'll provide breakfast for people. Um, and we have what we call the pods here. Okay. The space is divided into small cubicles with just enough space to put a bed. The room's doorway has gaps at the top and bottom, so the supervisors can easily check on the well-being of the occupants. Inside the room, there are personal belongings and a winter coat hangs in the corner. Some rooms have towels and clothes draped over the door. There are a total of 20 bedrooms like this here but there are not enough for the number of homeless people across England. Tens of thousands of homeless people are on waiting lists for shelters because public, private and emergency shelters have been full for the last decade, while budget constraints hinder the building of new ones. And why can't you build more? Um, well, it's just we haven't got the finances for it. Um, we, do get, we do get funding for everyone. Homeless men and women dwell in a small hall where men huddle on benches outside the rooms. In the small kitchen, 
The staff are serving hot soup, beans and fish. A homeless man is enjoying his soup in the corner, while two others stand in line. Instead of giving away free food, it is sold at a very low price, which the homeless can afford. This policy aims to raise awareness about the value of food and promote a positive attitude towards homelessness, to prevent them feeling that they are begging for whatever is provided. People's looks. The looks of people, really. Yeah. Because they look you like you're a bit of dirt on the, dirt on the bottom of their shoe when we're not. We are hum we're all human beings at the end of the day. Sorry that we ain't got a house to go back to and things like that. But yeah, there are some drug users and some alcoholics on the streets, but we're not all the same. But me, I don't touch drugs. I don't, I've never touched drugs in my life. A bright purple double-decker bus runs slowly down the road. This vehicle is not like the city's regular buses because it's been designed specifically to serve the homeless. In addition to insufficient emergency housing, a surprising number of homeless people appear willing to live close to starvation, eating meals on the roadside instead of having a full meal or sleeping in a warm shelter shared with other people. There are rules and regulations that must be followed when living in the shelter, such as specific entry and exit times to avoid disturbing others. Many people don't like this lifestyle and choose to live freely outside. More importantly, when drugs are involved, the users tend to avoid the shelters where drugs are strictly prohibited. Huge amount of people, because of the stress and strains that they face, um, taking drugs and um, uh, uh, alcohol abuse, which adds pressure to families, and sometimes pa families really don't know how to cope with that. And so the only way very often they can cope is by, you know, putting their family member out because it's disrupting the home for whole family. When the homeless people don't come to seek help at the shelter, the Purple Bus provides a mobile assistance service. Bus is a good platform to engage with people, not as an institution. So it is a public space because we are bringing the service to the service users and there are sleepers who normally wouldn't engage with the institution. Uh, so it's, you know, they can jump on uh, and jump out of the bus as they pleased and they will still get the support as much as they would like us to support them with. A warm drink on a cold day, a piece of soft bread and freshly baked pastries, along with the smiles and hospitality of the staff, create a sense of refuge. Exactly, you know, homeless people who are transient, who are chaotic, uh, who have issues, they, they don't want bureaucracy, they want a simple process that would help them initially to get off the streets. It's as simple as that. And unfortunately, we provide this. We, we've got a very simple approach to, to, to helping people. We listen to their needs and address what they need us to address initially. And from then on, they, they move on. It's their decision. In addition to food, the inside of the bus is arranged like a small lounge or waiting room, where the homeless can take a temporary but welcome rest. There's even a washing machine ready to be of service to anyone who needs to wash clothes. When the bus is parked, volunteers prepare drinks and snacks to distribute to the homeless. While people wait to receive food, staff will engage in conversation to build trust, which may eventually lead to further assistance being provided. This young woman left her home at the age of 18 due to domestic violence. After 10 years of living on the streets and relying on this bus for sustenance, she was finally granted permanent housing assistance from the government. Now you have the flat. Yeah, yeah. What's your plan from now? Um, just moving on with my life, really, getting a job. Um, just making myself proud. Looking forward, Don't, not looking back. So yeah, what are you a new job? Um, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I just want a job, daily income, and like something to wake up for in the morning, go out to work, come home, just that, just routine, normality. Nice, nice company really. They are, they're amazing people, amazing people. They got hearts of gold. 
So yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing what they do. It's amazing. Your life. Yeah, yeah, basically. Basically, yeah. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. The issue of homelessness in England is becoming increasingly serious. Real estate prices in London continue to rise in a city which is already one of the most expensive in which to live in the world. Meanwhile, the income of ordinary people and social welfare benefits have not kept pace. Moreover, the availability of affordable housing for low-income people has decreased and the organisations which provide accommodation are facing budget cuts. The policy of reducing housing welfare payments for people aged 18 to 25 has resulted in rising numbers of new homeless, especially among the young and female population. Individually, they have stories of facing domestic violence, experiencing failures in life, struggling with drug problems and dealing with other personal challenges. I don't really, I don't know. I don't know why there's more homeless women now than there was back then. Uh, we see regular females that decided to, to, to be street homeless uh, or new females, but uh, they help, they want to they wanna get move on from, from street homelessness and find accommodation relatively quickly. So they're more motivated because they recognise themselves as, as more vulnerable on the streets uh, than men would feel. But obviously things like substance misuse is a major issue amongst young people. Um, but also we're seeing a lot of people who have never really had the opportunity to have a settled life. So they've been looked after by the local authority perhaps. We have people who've been abuse victims as children. Um, and so very often people just haven't had that stability that we all need when we're growing up. Sociologists have discovered that the number of homeless people varies based on urban development. The more developed a city becomes, the greater the number of homeless tends to be. The rapid increase in the homeless population has driven the British government to allocate a budget exceeding a billion pounds to tackle this issue. Nevertheless, simply offering shelters and distributing food will not resolve the problem of homelessness. It is a complex problem, on the streets and in the shadows. There are those who have both unwillingly and intentionally become homeless. I love you, yes I do, oh want to spend all my money on you. Every day when you say that I'm not going to take any more. Whoa, 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 whoa. 